Hi, thank you everybody. My name is Simran um, and I'm very, very excited to be here today. I always get a little nervous before speaking as the last person because I know that there is, you know, food and drinks outside and everybody is in a hurry to, you know, go outside. So I promise you I'm not going to take too much time. Um, a lot of my presentation about is actually data that you may have already seen. Uh, but what we've tried to do is, you know, probably give you a little bit of insight into what the cause for some of the data could be and what, more importantly, the effect uh, of that is, right? And how as planners, marketeers, we can actually use some of these insights uh, and data in a more actionable fashion. Um, so with that, um, the main focus of my presentation and what we want to talk about today is really the rise and rise of digital India. And I know a lot has been discussed today in terms of, you know, how we should approach this collectively as advertisers, as media owners, etc. Um, but just bringing focus back a little bit into, you know, what we want to talk about. So this is a quote that, you know, we've actually been mentioning a fair bit in some of our presentations. Um, and especially when you put it in the context of technology, I think this quote becomes a lot more relevant. Um, all of us have seen, you know, the growth of technology in our own lives, right? And I think we have also seen, uh, you know, how technology grows us at a certain rate and then reaches an inflection point and that rate of change becomes much faster and adoption becomes much faster, especially for us as GeoCinema, as a digital platform. This is a far more relevant statement. Uh, reason for that is I think a lot of us would, you know, agree. Uh, until even, you know, early 2022, Geo Cinema really was not known as a sports platform. I think all of us probably consume content on Geo Cinema maybe because some new movie released on it, etc. Right? Uh, but just with, you know, acquiring rights to FIFA and then, of course, following up with acquiring rights for the IPL. In a short span of about 18 months, um, and of course, full credit to, you know, our, uh, our partnerships team and our corporate strategy team to actually go ahead and acquire a really, really robust roster of, uh, you know, sports rights. Geo Cinema today is the largest sports uh, consumption uh, OTT platform in the country, right? So this tells you that, you know, there could have been a way in which a consumer is behaving, uh, but change can happen really, really fast. Uh, and of course, a few other examples of, you know, how India really is rapidly changing, uh, you know, as far as adoption of digital is concerned. I think all of us in the room will identify, uh, you know, with the game-changing sort of impact that Geo had uh, by taking, you know, last mile mobile connectivity up as a challenge. Um, UPI, of course, is deeply penetrated in the country. In fact, I think in, in terms of, for, you know, most of us, I'm sure, in the room are travelers. I think we would know as, you know, out even compared to international locations, the kind of penetration that UPI has in India, probably second only to probably WeChat in China, right? Where everybody in China is using WeChat to make payments. I think in India, you know, everybody, you literally can walk out of your home with just your mobile and don't need anything, right? You don't need your card. Uh, I, I've forgotten the last time I had cash uh, on me, you know, because uh, really the penetration has been so deep and one would instinctively think that this is only probably happening, uh, you know, in super urban centers or top six, um, you know, metros. But I'm sure, you know, once you look at the data that some of the UPI platforms uh, openly share, uh, it'll tell you that this penetration actually has gone fairly deep, right? Uh, so all of these aspects basically are bringing alive just how, how much Indians have embraced technology and digital connectivity. Um, and a few pointers you have to notice as well, right? So while we say that, you know, we are seeing unprecedented growth, of course, as per try, uh, you know, the mobile internet user base in the country is set to grow to about 900 uh, million users. This, of course, you know, a large chunk of this is going to be, um, you know, is a, the large growth of this is going to come from the 4G feature phone penetration in the market. Um, and, of course, I think a lot of conversation has happened today about connected TV rise. Um, and, you know, I think all of us are seeing that change towards connected TV in our own lives as well, right? I think four years ago, my parents still had a set-top box and, um, you know, I think COVID also sort of, uh, you know, made some of this change happen faster and acted as a catalyst. Um, and, you know, it's been a few years now that even someone like my parent, my parents don't feel the need to have a set-top box at home and, you know, are, have, can now consume whatever, whatever they want on their large screen without needing, you know, a, a, a DTH connection. Interestingly, actually, I was reading this report uh, that try, you know, um, 
uh, Tri shared, I think about a couple of three days ago, uh, wherein, uh, you know, the data that Tri said is that DTH operators have seen about a 1.3 million drop in subscriber base just between July and September last year. So going back to my point that I was talking about is that, you know, technology changes your lives at a certain rate till a certain point, and after a certain inflection point, that rate of change happens much faster. I'm sure all of you recollect, you know, getting onto Facebook because your friend said so, and then suddenly finding everybody on Facebook, and then suddenly leaving Facebook as well because all of your moms and aunts and uncles were on Facebook, right? So that change also happened very, very fast. Um, Again, a few growth drivers. I think ri rising device penetration, I already spoke about this. Uh, you know, rising access to high-speed internet. Um, in fact, I think, uh, you know, Geo Air Fiber, uh, Airtel Extreme Air Fiber have done an immense effort into taking Wi-Fi penetration into, you know, a lot of, uh, a large part of the country. Uh, and of course, you know, making data really, really accessible to India at large. I think India is probably the number three or number four cheap data markets behind maybe just two or three countries, uh, right? Making data so accessible and cheap uh, has been one of the big reasons why I think Indians have managed to adopt uh, to this entire change uh, so wholeheartedly and in such large numbers. So what do these numbers mean, right? So I, I wanted to touch upon a little bit on the numbers, but then also speak uh, from the context of demographics. Like what does this really mean in terms of changing demographics? And then we'll speak a little bit about what does this mean in the context of changing behaviors, right? So big, I think some of these uh, you know, pieces all of us may instinctively know. For example, we know that we read everywhere that India is a young country, you know, compared to other countries, you know, very, very young population. The truth is actually yeah, about 30% of India's population is in the age of 18 to 34, right? And for a lot of marketers, for a lot of advertisers, this is the prime segment that, you know, we're going after. Uh, a, a vast part of India actually is moving into urbanization, right? People are moving from rural areas and coming into, you know, one lakh plus, one million plus towns. So urbanization is happening at a faster pace, of course, also fueled by a lot of things like the government's dedication to infrastructure, you know, uh, emergence of, uh, you know, uh, the whole startup ecosystem, of course, connectivity, etc. Um, so urban households actually are set to overtake rural households in India by the year 2060, which uh, is amazing, right? Um, not just that, so while this is a change that's happening at a demographic level, let's look at what is a change that's happening at a behavioral level, level right? Because we are a young and urban population, um, the effect that we are seeing is that this population is actually now spending about one third of their waking hours on their mobile phones. Actually, this is, and India's over index in most other markets as far as this is concerned. I think Brazil, Vietnam are probably the other couple of markets which are ahead of India um, as far as this is concerned. But Indians really are spending an inordinate amount of time on their mobile phones. Of course, one of the big reasons is cheap access to data and connectivity. But also that, you know, I think just being connected, consuming uh, content on our mobile phones has become second nature to Indians. Um, so that's one big piece. Of course, the second big adoption that's happening in the country is the connected TV adoption. Uh, this base is actually set to grow to about 60 million, um, you know, in the coming year, 60 million devices. Um, in fact, I think a lot of the reports are also saying about 92 to 93% of new televisions sold in the country today are connected TV devices. So we all know that this change is not just coming, the change is here. So how can we kind of prepare ourselves to, you know, deal with this change a little bit better? Um, I think a lot has been spoken about, you know, the, the addicts and, uh, you know, how the addicts' uh, weightages, etc., are changing. Um, of course, a big effect of that is that, you know, cord cutting or cord shifting is an emerging phenomenon. I spoke about my parents, and while that is an anecdotal piece of information, that also tells you that, you know, the change that's happening is also the change that you see in your own environment. Uh, I remember when OTTs entered the market, uh, you know, it was probably something that was adopted by early adopters, and a lot of people would say that who's going to watch th something on your phone, right? And today, all of us are watching things on our phone. It's just become second nature to us because this technology is solving for a real convenience problem in our lives. Um, Similarly, I think connectivity on, on your connected television, the whole variety of content, having, you know, your own agency to say that I will pick what I want to watch um, when I want to watch it, I think all of these factors are really contributing to the 
massive adoption that we are seeing to connected TV. And of course, I think a lot of technological advancement is also helping establish this behavior by way of, for example, if you take Geo Cinema as a platform, we've really committed ourselves to, you know, uh, showcasing some of the pre premium sports properties in 4K resolution, right? Which just is so much better as a consumer for you to consume compared to your standard definition or even HD definition television. So, you know, in terms of growth, of course, you know, connected TV universe is growing. Uh, about 80% of connected television viewership has come from urban areas, um, out of which about 59% has come from 1 million plus towns. So you can see that this is something that's penetrating and is not just a top six metro kind of a phenomenon. Um, and as you know, result of that, of course, where viewership goes, ad dollars or ad rupees go, right? Uh, so if viewership is moving in a certain direction, of course, advertisers are going to want to reach out to that consumer where the consumer is. And hence, we are seeing that shift in the ad X. And while, yes, a lot of the, ex you know, a lot of the spend that's happening on performance marketing is required because of the kind of businesses, um, you know, our advertisers are into, uh, I think we all do need to, as planners and advertisers and platforms, think about how best to use this emerging consumer behavior for branding efforts as well, and not judge a branding campaign by the, by the tenets of a performance campaign and vice versa, because then you're just setting the campaign up for failure. All right. So when it comes to ad of course, a large chunk of digital ad is going into online video. Um, some part of this could be performance, um, and you know, the big thing about online video is, I think all of us in the room will also recognize, a big thing about online video is also brand safety, right? Like how do you really ensure that your ad is being visible on content which is 100% brand safe or is meant for the user, um, you know, that, that you mean that ad for? Um, and I think that's, that's where OTT platforms sort of come in to uh, solve the puzzle because really that's an opportunity for you to reach out to a 100% brand safe audience, engaged audience, uh, who's looking for content uh, where they don't just spend, you know, seven or eight minutes of casual snacking time, but longer time, you know, so really commit and dedicate themselves to, you know, consume this content, and hence we say that they are a more engaged audience. Um, so when we talk about online video, um, you know, uh, online video landscape, of course, as far as the publisher-generated content landscape is concerned, this is how it is stacked up, and I've not um, added Netflix or Amazon Prime here simply because none of us can advertise there, right? So for us, what is relevant is these platforms. Um, Geocinema currently is at about 300 million monthly active users. What's interesting for us is actually our watch time is much higher than all other platforms. Uh, and that's one area where we are sort of winning. And our hypothesis, of course, there is that, you know, the sticky nature of all of the cricket rights that we own combined with our vast roster of entertainment you know, content that we have. Big Boss was a huge success for us, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, entertainment content was concerned. I think these few pieces put together and actually leading to the higher watch time on the platform. Um, talking a little bit more and give, giving you a little more color about what the user behavior is like and why, again, you know, we believe that uh, OTT is emerging as the platform for people to consume content. First, of course, is, you know, um, what we've seen on the platform is that one in every three cricket viewers is actually returning to the platform in the next one month to consume some entertainment content, right? So cricket is your large top of the funnel to collate a lot of the audiences, and that's a content strategy that we have adopted. But more interestingly, the peak streaming time for Geo Cinema is actually 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., which was erstwhile called, you know, television prime time, and we are actually seeing this behavior where most number of users are actually logging onto our platform at the exact time to consume content. And the third piece, you know, the third piece of color that we can add over here is that uh, users actually log on to GeoCinema on average about three times a day. Of course, the longest sessions are in the prime time um, sort of band. Uh, so coming to, you know, what, what I'm here to talk to you about, my favorite time of the year, which is not Christmas, but IPL. Uh, our ambition for IPL uh, this year is we're estimating a platform reach of about 650 million uh, users, and I just want to, you know, at a very high level, touch upon some of the new big things that we have in the offing this year, and something that you, you know, need to keep in mind. And in fact, one of the solutions actually will speak really well to, uh, you know, um, I think Mr. Balki's presentation about the about the importance of creative uh, when when you're advertising on um, IPL. But the big thing that we want to do is, you know, the largest reach aggregation. 
So taking IPL to every corner of the country. So like I said, uh, you know, feature phones, 4G enabled feature phones are going to be a big part of our story here. We've launched Geo Bharat. One in every three 4G feature phones is actually a Geo Bharat phone. Uh, now, we are launching uh, our UI in multi languages. So you don't really need to be only an English content reader to be able to, you know, consume content on our app. Our app interface is actually going to change to multiple languages. So we're basically going deeper into our commitment uh, of making, you know, content accessible across languages. We, the first step that we took in this direction was last year when we made IPL commentary available in 12 languages. Languages like, you know, Punjabi, Bhojpuri, Odia, which had erstwhile been so underserved in cricket commentary were actually, you know, uh, served on IPL and Geo Cinema last year. Uh, and the final piece of the puzzle for us on this is, uh, you know, how do we go deeper into CTV penetration and really can commit ourselves to deeper distribution for our platform and connect connected TV devices as well. So I'll just do one quick drop down into Geo Bharat first. So essentially to give you a, you know, background, because I'm sure a lot of you have not seen this phone. In fact, uh, I think some of us may be carrying this phone in the current India England series is streaming live um, on this phone. I've actually seen it myself. It's a pretty decent experience for a 4G enabled small screen device. You can, you know, you can hear the commentary really well. Uh, currently we have commentary available in two languages and we do have, we do plan to scale it up to about five languages um, during the IPL. These phones have UPI light on them. So you do know that these audiences have some capability for transacting. So perfect sort of device, uh, you know, especially perfect kind of a device if you want to, you know, do campaigns for products with, you know, the sachet products, right, where the audience itself is different. Uh, so Geo Bharat really has been built for that and working with us, um, you know, on this could help you reach out to an audience which otherwise would have been very, very hard to address. <coughs> Excuse me. And on Geo Bharat, we're estimating a reach of about 35 uh, million users in the upcoming, by the upcoming season of IPL. Um, and the second big thing, like I said, you know, so while CTV is a big story for us, I think the other big thing that emerged for us last year, and we had not enabled this as a targeting uh, piece last year, was just the growth of the 4K feed on the platform. Uh, right, and this was a pleasant surprise for us. About 20% of the CTV audience actually consumed um, the tournament on 4K devices, and one has to assume that 4K devices are actually your high-end, your or your top-end connected televisions, and you need to have a stable, you know, Wi-Fi connection, broadband connection, for you to be able to stream the entire match in 4K. So that's a real signal for affluence. And but when we looked at a couple of other studies, we saw that this audience was also over-indexed on a lot of discretionary spending. Um, making the partnership on a 4K feed on Geo Cinema, you know, actually a good way for you to reach out to especially a super premium audience. <coughs> and finally, you know, just wanted to, I mentioned this earlier, just want to talk about a few of the big things that we are doing. Um, you know, Super Bowl just happened this weekend, right? And I think all of us saw the Uber Eats commercial, all of us saw the Dunkin' Donuts uh, commercial, and every year, year on year, you know, advertisers do fabulous work with Super Bowl, uh, but I think the big role that happens here is also the platform that Super Bowl provides. Uh, you know that there are going to be millions of eyeballs tuning into, uh, you know, the platform, although, I mean, lesser in comparison to the number of people who watch IPL in India, um, but very big still in the context of the US. Uh, you know, you know there are going to be millions of people, uh, you know, watching the watching the tournament and watching halftime, which is what makes it so special, right? So we wanted to actually recreate this kind of an experience for advertisers. So this season on IPL on Geo Cinema, on the opening match, the first five over breaks will actually be dedicated to five brands who want to debut their campaign uh, on IPL. Um, and we're happy to work, uh, you know, with, with the brands to see, you know, how we can place these ads. But the idea is not simply giving you exposures, and we all know that having a simultaneous exposure, of course, has its benefits. People start tweeting, there are so many conversations that, you know, come out of it, and that al also helps you drive that much more visibility. But as a platform, we want to kind of, you know, put the campaign on a pedestal so that it really has that, you know, sense that something really big has kind of opened on the platform. So whether it is nudges by saying that, okay, this season's Cadbury's ad is upcoming in the next over to get excitement going, uh, we've got a lot of this plan. Plus, we've got, uh, you know, a lot of the behind the scenes or rather ancillary content around uh, the main uh, film. 
can also reside on the platform um, for video on demand. Again, you know, I go back to my Dunkin' Donuts example. I think the best piece of the work that came out of that was a surround content that they did with Ben Affleck, which is actually residing on YouTube and not uh, was not actually streamed um, on the live game, right? And audiences have grown now to consume video on demand on multiple platforms, right? So use this opportunity to not just have your hero uh, creative, but also create a bunch of smaller creatives to keep the audience going through the season and leverage the power of the reach that the platform has in those, you know, 54, 55 days to give legs to your campaign. So that's on the brand spotlight piece. And finally, you know, I think, um, I think some of you may have seen this. We are unlocking about 100 cohorts uh, this season. This is the large, largest number of cohorts ever. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, think of this as ways in which, you know, you could make your campaign a little more efficient, but don't think of this in a way, uh, think of, don't think of this in a way where, you know, you're just adding more and more cuts because we don't really know how effective that is going to be, right? Uh, so the cohorts that we have are going to be across, there are going to be geo clusters, there will be age clusters, uh, interest cohorts, etc. So a lot of, um, you know, targeting possible. Ad units across, you know, the, I will actually, let me speak about this on the follow-up slide. Yeah, ad units across objectives, right? So whether, you know, if you want to reach the dark market or rather the tough to reach market users, Geo Bharat is your solution. For mass users, you know, you have a mass campaign, want to drive very, very high level of awareness. Handheld is the right device for you to go for, unless and until if you're not a premium product, work with us on handheld. If you're looking for a premium product, maybe CTV is the right strategy for you. Um, you know, and of course, we have a new product for what we call early tech adopters. There are about 100 million of these that we have identified on the platform who've actually engaged with a lot of the new features that we have on the platform. So work with us to reach out to just this audience because obviously this audience has a different behavior that you could probably harness uh, for your campaign. And as a panel looks, you know, so whether it is using things like a masthead to drive impact, very, very high level of awareness, or, you know, just using video ads, right, using mid-rolls to drive a very high level of awareness, down to consideration preference. In consideration, you know, work with us to cu for a curated branded content series. We've done a few of this last year. And the good thing is that, you know, we're now capable of doing a complete turnkey uh, piece on this. And then finally, of course, you know, we have a few new ad assets that we are launching this year, which are more driven towards driving users for action. Uh, the big thing here, of course, is the fact that, you know, this season on GeoCinema, even if a user clicks on something and goes into an outside ecosystem, the match still continues playing on picture and picture. So the user is actually not going to miss out on any, you know, stellar moment that they otherwise would have missed out on. So we are fairly confident of, you know, adoption of that. Um, on the platform. And with that, I'm at the end of my presentation and also the time that was allotted to me, not just IPL. We also have a lot of other sport, uh, you know, upcoming. IPL is going to be closely followed by Olympics. So don't forget, uh, you know, start planning for Olympics from now. In fact, our GTM is going to hit uh, very soon. But, you know, start planning from now because on Olympics, a lot can be done, and I think India is obviously gunning for the largest ever gold hall um, at the Olympics, and, and, you know, we have the biggest chances this year, so, you know, hopefully that will be good for all of us. And aside from that, a big slate of uh, premium, um, you know, emerging sports on the platform as well. So, yeah, so, you know, I mean, there is a revolution happening. I hope we can work with some of you uh, on this, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them over a drink outside. So, thank you.